Welcome, everybody. Um, this week, we are going over animal communication. Animal, animal communication is one of the uh, most excited topics in animal behavior, uh, not only because uh, my research involves in, uh, involves in the uh, topics of the animal communication, but also this is the most conspicuous part of the uh, animal behavior often. Uh, for example, like the, uh, the, the cicadas singing in the, in the summer day, you can hear the cicadas singing all around the campus uh, in, 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 the, in the summer. Uh, also, uh, like a bird singing uh, uh, in the spring semester, usually like uh, uh, April, uh, early April, you can hear lots of singing uh, in, uh, in, in campus so that even though you're not aware of the, uh, the, the, uh, the animal behavior, topics of animal behavior, you are uh, usually noticed by the uh, activities of the animal behavior. That is the, their communication uh, between individuals. Um, and today, I specifically focus on two topics of the animal communication, which is the fundamental to the, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, animal communication. The first, the origins of a signal. What does it mean by is that how is a, how is a signal is originated, originated or took place for the first time? That's the uh, out of nothing. That's the, uh, the first one, origin of a signal. And the second, once the signal is originated, okay, let's have the, uh, some signal evolved that took place, then how is it maintained over a long time? Why this signal disappears simply uh, into nothing? Is, why is it maintained such a, for such a long time? What's the advantage of that? Uh, what's the select selective pressures of the signal maintained for a long time? That's the uh, second topic. That's, uh, I'm going to focus on these two topics among many interesting topics in animal behavior. Okay, uh, for the first topic, the origin of a signal, I want to take you to, uh, to the gut piece. And in the gut piece, that's the, one of the most popular, the freshwater aquarium species. You know, if you go to the, uh, the, the pet shops in you know, the aquarium, the, the small fish, uh, very cheap, very, very many, uh, those are usually the guppies. They are live bearing, meaning that the <coughs> they give birth to uh, the live animals. Also, they are uh, distributed, distributed in nature in streams of Central and, and South America. And this one, this individual, the bigger one, that's the female, and the smaller one is, the, is a male. The females are usually uh, gray, not conspicuous, whereas Males have splashes, spots, uh, or stripes, like a stripes all stripes on, <coughs> on the tail that can be any color imaginable. So they are, the, the males are small, but they are uh, very colorful, splash. Uh, the females are big, but they are not conspicuous, usually gray in color. And, and, and females, uh, they prefer to mate with m males that have bright orange spots. If you have some bright orange spots or those uh, stripes uh, in, in their body coloration, then the females prefer the, those males. And <coughs> if you see here, this, the, uh, this male, the, uh, these are the male, and this is the female, they're smaller. You can see the individual in the middle, uh, there is like a orange, uh, orange patterns on, the, uh, <coughs> on their body. Males, males cannot synthesize this orange, uh, this, uh, this, this orange color de novo. What does, what does mean, mean is that the, uh, they have to acquire these orange pigments from the food they eat. And this is such a, uh, such a food. So this fruit drops into the water. Then you see the, uh, the orange, the, the fruits, the males that eat, the, eat this food. This is the food to females as well. Then, and this, the pigments from this food can, uh, <coughs> can go to the, uh, the uh, orange color patches, and the females may prefer those males with orange color patches. So males, 
that uh, secure sufficient sufficient amount of carotenoid and, and this this orange color that's the, the the pigment called carotenoids uh, carotenoids incorp incorporate the chemical into the ornamental color pat uh, uh, patches on their bodies so uh, this food this this food this this orange food that's the food to males and females that also very important food to females. So you can easily imagine that the, um, um, the, the, uh, the orange fruits are very uh, nutritionally valuable to, to females. So you can imagine that females evolved visual sensitivity to orange. So that the, uh, the females, uh, they have to detect these orange colors easily because that's the uh, color of the food. So that um, if, if it's a male, if you have the orange colors on your body, uh, then you might be easily detected by the, uh, by the females because females have already built-in uh, built visual sensitivity to color orange. So what I'm trying to say right now is that the, uh, this mating preference, which is the uh, signal, okay, mating preference, is simply a byproduct of sensory preference that has, or that has evolved in another context, which is like a, uh, like a food. A female has like a, a orange sensitivity because they are eating the orange fruits. And males simply take advantage of uh, the male, uh, the, 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 the female sensory preference. Uh, preference. So that's, uh, that might be why, how the signal might be originated. So how do you test that the hypothesis? In some populations, if you go to the, the streams, and the female preference may vary. Uh, in, some, in, in some populations, females prefer uh, males has a lot of like, orange spots. And in other streams, uh, they have less preference for the, uh, uh, the orange coloration. Uh, that's, that's because uh, the orange color, coloration is very conspicuous to females as well as the predators. So if you have a lot of predators and those individuals that have uh, less orange colors might be preferable, but if you have less predators, then the, uh, uh, the individual, the males have the, uh, with a, lo a lot of the orange uh, coloration might be preferred by the female. So that there's, they, uh, there's a, a variation of the strengths of the female preference to the orange color. Then you take out the females, they put it in the tank, and then you give some uh, the discs, like a small discs of, of various color. And then if you have the, uh, uh, the females from the, uh, <coughs> the, the high strengths of the, the, or, uh, the female preference to the orange color, then they bite more, uh, more to the, um, the orange disc. If, if, you come from, if you come from the, uh, the population where the, uh, there's lots of high predation pressure, so the females have less preference to the orange color, then they buy these orange discs less. So that here, we can show that the, uh, the female preference is, is strictly correlated with the, uh, these, the, the bias to the orange discs, which is the, which, uh, which is the, uh, the they, may, um, they may be originated uh, because it's the uh, uh, color of the food. Okay, um, here, um, we just talk about the, the examples of the, uh, the, the guppies. Uh, the, the, the signal might be origi originated from totally different context, which is the, uh, like a, for example, like a food. So once it, this signal, okay, once this, this orange color is uh, originated, how is it maintained? You know, once this food, uh, the signal is uh, uh, evolved, it may be disappear because, like a, for example, like a high pre predation pressure, the uh, lots of the predators they like the also orange color because it's very conspicuous. They will predate on those indivi individuals with the uh, orange co orange colors. Then then those individuals will be will disappear from the population. Then the signal is lost. But we still hear that the uh, the signals are around. Then the important question now is that how those signals might be maintained in the population still. So now the second part of the uh, this lecture focus on the, how the signal is maintained over space. So I want to take you to, to this example, which is a firefly, one of my favorite uh, insects in the summer. Um, that's the, uh, the, the male and female fireflies. If you look at the uh, uh, 
ventral side. Ventral side is like, uh, you know, that's the, that's the dorsal side. It's, this is the ventral side. And you see the, uh, the, the tip of the, uh, that's, the, that's, the tip, that's the ventral, uh, that's the abdomen. So if you go to the, uh, the tip of the abdomen, about here or, or here, you see this uh, different color here, the same as in females. So when uh, <coughs> it emit the, emit the light, you know, it, it, gives the, the, it gives the flesh. And males of these fireflies, okay, they are flying around, and then they're giving a species-specific flesh. For example, this species here, <coughs> uh, for tinus uh, of males, uh, this, spe uh, this species give the, uh, like a J-shaped flesh pattern. So starting from here, and then they moves up. So moves like, like this one. So it, it, it gives a, a, a J-shaped flash signal. And sometimes it gives like a, it's almost like a dots, or sometimes like a dashes. So depending on the, the, the firefly species, they give the different flash signals. It can be <coughs> shown in like here. So females, the males flying around, Giving, uh, giving the flash signal in flight. So this is the male. And down there here, down there is the females. On the ground, on the ground. So down the, the females, looking up, uh, you see the, the males are flying around. You, you notice that the, uh, the males of your own species are uh, giving the flash patterns. And if you are interested in, you give your own signals. So females, they, also flash, respond back to the uh, male, male signal, then uh, this, uh, this male, it land, uh, de uh, detect the signals from the females, it lands nearby of the, of the females and approach to the, uh, to the female and they may mate with each other. So here, the timing uh, uh, responding to the male signal is critical. So once this is the male signal, it, it, gives, it gives some species-specific signal. And then after, the, uh, the, after the, um, giving a signal by the male, the female times in a very uh, specific amount of time, gives a pre uh, uh, at the, um, the exact amount of time, females has to give a, give a signal. If this, I mean, this is, the, this is the very species specific, you give, it, you give the signal at the right time, the, the, the males notice that this is the females of my own species and then lands. So that's the way the, they, the males and females communicate with each other in fireflies. So that's the, the signals of the, the flash patterns for each species. And this is the, uh, uh, the flash patterns of the, uh, of, by the females for each species and all the difference. Um, so everything is good, so far okay, but look at this, this one. This is the male here. That's the male of the Photinus firefly. It just landed to this female, approached to this female, which is the uh, female fortress, uh, fortress firefly. It's totally different species. In fact, it's a, it's a different genus. So what happened here is that that's the, uh, this is the female, this huge individual, that's the female, and she's very hungry right now. So she wants to eat something. So she gives false signal, okay? She imitates the female signal of this species so that this male, spe uh, this male, the Photinus, Photinus uh, firefly male, uh, thought that this is the maybe a signal of, of his own species, landed, approached to this female, and, but there's the female from the uh, different species, and, and she's eating this, this male now. So there's a, like a, now it's, it's a deception. She's, she's deceiving this female, so that now, uh, because of the communication between these two individuals, now she's, uh, this, uh, the male is the food uh, to, to, to this female, and this is called aggressive mimicry. Here, uh, it should give an inter interesting question because uh, we can simply ask whether this is the communication, in fact. Uh, in, a, in the previous example, we have both males and females. They kind of agreed, agreed upon each other. So we communicate with, with each other so that they mate, so give the uh, offspring, which is the uh, uh, beneficial to both males and females. But here, the, the males lose 
of fitness because he, he dies out of this interaction, females increase. Probably this is not an intent of this, this, this male, but this is how it happens. So probably male doesn't want this, uh, this uh, 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 devour, uh, devouring by the females. So let's now, uh, uh, think about this communication. What is the communication is exactly? Uh, we know that the, both males and females increase their own fitness. With, it, it should be a communication. But the, the, the examples of uh, Fortress females and Botinus males, uh, then we can, uh, some uh, you can simply ask whether that, that's the uh, examples of communication too. So communication in the broad, broadest sense has three components, which is the sender and receiver, and there's information uh, transfer between these two, then that might be called communication. But let's assume this, uh, the, the, this scenario is here. We have uh, the firefly males and females of the same species giving the signal, uh, signal with each other, and then they mate and, give, uh, and then produce offspring. Again, that's the beneficial incre in increase of fitness to the signaler and receiver, then we can imagine that the, uh, the evolution of signal is, is possible. The signal, the, this signal is maintained, can be maintained for the long, long time. But for the examples of the, um, uh, the, the, for, uh, the, the Fortress and Fortinus example, the females, she increased his, uh, her own fitness by devouring the, uh, the receiver, okay? That receiver, which is the you know, Fortinus male, but the male, male, uh, she, uh, he thought that that's the signal from the uh, from his own species, but in fact that's the signal imitated by the another species and being just eaten by that female. Then he lost his life. He lose his fitness. Okay, so in this case, uh, the signal increases uh, increase fitness, receive a lower lower the fitness. Then uh, the, this signal is cannot be maintained because. Um, sometime in the course of the evolution, the receiver stopped responding to the uh, to signals, then this communication system cannot maintain over a long time. So there's no evolution uh, of, of a signal. At the same, <coughs> the, the signal cannot be maintained in this scenario. Same as here, if the uh, signal uh, lowered, uh, lowered the their, their fitness, but the uh, receiver increased, increased their fitness in this scenario again, the signals cannot be maintained for a long time. There's no evolution of, uh, of the signal in these two scenarios. So uh, let's have the, uh, some table summarizing all of this. Uh, here's the uh, sender, as you see, here's the signaler giving the signals, and here's the receiver uh, that's the uh, receive the uh, information. And it could be positive or zero or negative, negative in terms of the, um, uh, the, the value of the information or the, uh, the fitness, same as here, zero or ne negative. If both signaler and receiver increase their fitness at the same time, it's called true communication. That's the real communication that we talk about. But the signaler increase his, uh, increases his fitness, the, the receiver, uh, whereas a receiver uh, has no increase of fitness or the uh, negative, uh, <coughs> uh, negative increase of fitness is called manipulation or the, or the, the, or the deceit. And that's the, we just, uh, we just, the, uh, get, uh, we just have the uh, example in the firefly. And we can have the another situation here. The signal uh, uh, decrease the uh, fitness or, or no, no change of the, uh, uh, the fitness whereas the, the receivers increase his, uh, his, uh, his fitness, and that's the called eavesdropping or the exploitation. I can give this, uh, I will give this example later on. So let's, fo let's focus on the true communication. You know, again, both the, um, the, the, the signalers and receivers uh, experience increases fitness at the same time, and the uh, the communication is evolved only under this scenario. So that's why it's called true communication. 
and the medium, you know, the, the information, tra information is transmitted between the, uh, between the, the signals, signaler and the receiver in the form of the, uh, the signals. So the, uh, the medium in, um, in the process of a true communication is called a signal. So signal is an act or a structure that alters the behavior of another organism which evolved because of that effect so that the, uh, um, what does it mean is that that's the increase of fitness uh, from the side of the uh, signaler and, 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 uh, and which is effective because the receiver's response has also evolved. What does it mean is that the receivers also experience increase of fitness. So you have the uh, increase of the fitness both, uh, both signal and receiver, and, and the, uh, that's a true communication, and, uh, and the signal is mediating between these two. So now uh, I can give you the, uh, the, the real, real definition of communication, which is called like, uh, the operational definition of the uh, true communication, uh, has uh, again three, company, uh, three components. Uh, don't be confused with the, uh, the, uh, the earlier definition of communication, which is the communication in the broad broadest sense, but this is the, uh, the, the, the true communication. You have to have sender and receiver and signal, okay, that's the signal. It, it means that the uh, signal, you can have increase of fitness both of sender and receiver. And the third component of, the, uh, of this def def uh, definition is the uh, information transfer. When you have, if you have these three conditions met, then you can say there's a communication. So context in true communication. Under what context this communication occurs, uh, I can, we can uh, identify seven possible uh, contexts, conflict resolution, uh, territory defense, sexual interactions, parent offspring interactions, social integrations, environmental context, auto communication, and we can discuss more uh, in the uh, discussion section. I, can, uh, I want you to have some at least one example uh, for each of these contexts in the discussion session. Okay, um, now let's look at some other aspects of the, uh, uh, this, uh, the maintenance of a signal over time. It's easy to know whether the signaler uh, experienced the increase of fitness, but that's relatively easy to tell, but it's, it's usually difficult to tell whether receivers also experience the increase of, increase of fitness uh, by, uh, by these communication systems. So uh, how you, you, know, you wanna make sure that the uh, uh, receivers also experience, experience the uh, increase, increase of fitness, otherwise the communication system cannot evolve. How, um, how do you know that? And we, we call this honest signals. What does it mean is that honest signal is that? Let's assume that the, uh, here's a male. It gives a signal in the form of the, uh, let's say, the length of the tail, or the, uh, how, how colorful the, the, the tail is. So that the, if you have the 100% um, uh, quality male, that's, it's a good male, okay, good quality males, give this amount of the uh, signal. And if you have this, some um, uh, you know, low quality males, 50%, low quality males, and give, if, if this male, the low quality male, give the same amount of signal as the good quality males, then you know, the, 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 the receivers have no point of choosing between these two because these two individuals, low quality or high quality males, have the same amount of signal. No point of choosing between these two, so that no, pref no evolution of the, uh, the receiver preference. So that, <clears throat> and this is not honest signal. But let's uh, look at this, uh, this scenario. He, here's like a good quality male, give this amount of the signal, and uh, here's like a low quality male. You, know, you see the, the, the difference between these two, so that the, um, simply looking at between these two, the signals of these two individuals, and you can correlate into the quality of, quality of the male, then the females can tell you know, which one is the good, which one is the bad, the, a low quality male, then she can increase her own fitness. The receivers can increase uh, 
their, their fitness by uh, making a choice based on this signal because this signal exactly reflects the conditions of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the signalers. Then we say the signal is honest. This is the uh, honest signals. And, and that's, the, uh, that's, the, uh, that, that's the way to the make sure that the, uh, the, the receivers also increase, uh, increase the, the, fitness, uh, the experience of the fitness ben benefit by communicating. So let's give the examples of the, uh, the honest signals. Uh, here's the frog. This is the, this, this is the female frog. And uh, again, this is the female, the female frog. The males are on top now. They're trying to <coughs> mate with each other. And the females, you know, females, when females release the eggs, uh, and then the, uh, the, the, uh, the males also give the, the, the sperm immediately. Uh, but it takes some time, where, uh, time uh, to, uh, to the, uh, the female release the egg. So the, the, the males on top, but usually there is some other males around, other males around, come get uh, close to this mating pair and try to replace, try to displace these, uh, these males on top. Okay, so he has to defend his position, okay, on top of the female, to defend his position against other males. If you have like a smaller male, if you have a smaller male and he's a huge, a huge male, then you can tell um, this is obviously very, uh, very uh, advantageous by being big because you can dispel all other males. But if you are the smaller males, smaller males, then it's, um, you know, you can be easily displaced by other males. But how do the experiment, uh, how, how did the test this, the honest signal experiment? You basically experimentally shut up this, uh, the, the defending males, and then you play back the uh, speakers. So you have the speakers, speakers here. You're giving the uh, the, uh, the frog call like a croaks, the, the frog call croaks, and you give two kinds of the uh, the croaks. One is like a high pitched, high pitched croaks and low pitched croaks. And the high pitched you know, High pitched croaks is like a usually give the, given by the smaller males, and the low pitched croaks is given by like a big, huge males. Then, um, you know, it's a, this is a night, so that you can tell whether this, you know, the, 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 this is a huge or small. But um, the, uh, in this situation, you give the uh, high pitched small, and the, the all the neighbors there, you know, they may tell, okay, this is defended by the smaller male then you can get close to you and make a contact or fight with each other. But if you, give, if you heard like some low-pitched croak, you know, the, the neighbors may tell that yeah, this is defended by your huge males, then, then don't get close to it. So that there's a, a difference between these two. Uh, if, you, if you hear the high-pitched croaks, then the, uh, there's more contacts from the uh, from the neighboring males. But if you have the uh, low-pitched croaks, there's fewer attacks and, and less time spent attacking. So it's, it's, it's the, uh, the, the, the neighboring males, they tell, uh, they tell the size of the, uh, the, uh, the defending males by their, the, 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 the pitches of, of the croaks. So then you, you may ask that this question, why the smaller males, if you give the low-pitched uh, croaks, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's very advantageous, uh, less individuals attacking you, so that the, uh, why don't the small males pretend it to be large, by giving like a low pitched call, okay. If a smaller male and give the low pitch, low pitched call, then you know the, 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 your neighbor, your neighbors may not attack, but they can. They can do it because like a pitch, okay. The pitch is determined by the body size. Body mass determines the pitch of the signal that a male toad can generate. So if you're a smaller male, you can only give the. Uh, uh, the high pitched call. If you're a big male, you you, you can give the low pitched call, so that you, you cannot deceive. You cannot deceive here, so that it's uh, this pitch is the honest signal uh, in frogs and 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 toad. Um, <coughs> so now we understand that the uh, how the signal may be maintained uh, for a long time, both signalers and receivers experience increase of fitness by communicating with each other. However, we can have Ill illegitimate receivers and illegitimate signalers. 
uh, all year we got the examples of the, um, uh, the you know the the firefly female devouring the male of the other species. That's the illegitimate signalers giving the false signal of the other species, so that luring that uh, the the males of the other species uh, for uh, for <coughs> for the uh, for meal. And I can give the uh, illegitimate receivers here. Um, that's the, uh, the, you know, the, the uh, parasitoid fly, omia, it's just omia. You know, the males, that's the male crickets. Male crickets produce sound, uh, sound, so attract the females of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, the, the, of the female crickets. But this, uh, this, this fly can also hear the, the calling songs of these males, uh, of, of these male crickets, and orient to this uh, to, uh, to, uh, um, to this cricket, and come get close to it, and lay eggs on here, around over the uh, on crickets, and once these eggs hatch it, then it it, it, <coughs> it burrow into into the into the body of the uh, cricket, and it uh, it grows, it grow inside of the cricket, and then they um, they got out of the uh, the cricket when they when they are old enough, then killing these, uh, these male crickets. So that's the uh, example of the exploitation. The receivers uh, experience increase of fitness, whereas the signaler lose his fitness. That's the, uh, also the illegitimate receivers. He's intended to this, uh, this signal to, uh, to females of, of, of his own species, but the other species respond to the signal and then take advantage of this, uh, this signal. So uh, that's the cricket song, you know, the, the, the cricket song, the, uh, the frequency response curve here is mostly sensitive to the uh, uh, three, to five, uh, 3 to 5 kilohertz, and, and that's the, uh, the, the, uh, the threshold curve response curve for the uh, female cricket. It is, has a low threshold around 5 kilohertz, very sensitive to the, uh, to the uh, uh, calling song, the, the frequency of a, frequencies of a calling song. Compared with the males, it's, it's, it's very different. So females are you know, tuned to the, uh, the calling songs of the, of the crickets. And only calling song is a signal to female crickets. It is a cue, it is a cue to the, um, uh, to the, to the parasitic fly. And the cue, so the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the parasitic fly use a cue, which is the, uh, the calling songs of the cricket, to orient to that cricket. So cue is the feature of the uh, world animate or inanimate that can be used by an animal as a guide to the future actions. Um, how can this deception evolve, okay? Um, how can this deception, we see lots of deceptions around. The deceptions can build on, and they can build on only on true communication. You have to have a true communication to have the uh, to have the deception. Okay, so the, uh, that's the uh, so uh, you have to have robust true communication first. Then the deceptions might be evolved out this true communication. You are exploiting true communication, and that's possible. Uh, that's only possible when the the deceptions can can evolve. So costly traits like a phonotaxis uh, taxis or parasitic flies to the cricket calling songs or aggressive mimicry in firefly that we see earlier, that, that can be only evolved on the, uh, by exploring this true communication. So that, um, and the, you know, the males, the, the, the male fireflies, the photo, uh, photonous male fireflies, they don't want to be uh, lured by the, uh, uh, the, the flesh signals of the other species. He is intended to the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the female flesh patterns of, her whole, of his own species. But, uh, he's exploited by the uh, by the uh, uh, the fortress female female fly. <coughs> so again, this deception can uh, can only evolve out of these true communications. Okay, uh, now we come to the uh, conclusion of today's lecture, which is the evolution of uh, how the uh, uh, evolution of animal communication, how the uh, uh, the signal is evolved uh, for the first time uh, out of nothing. Uh, we think that the, um, you know, the, the signals has been evolved from, uh, from, uh, from other contexts, okay? It has evolved maybe like a food signals 
earlier uh, in the example of the, like a gut piece, but it has been changed for the uh, for purpose of the um, for, for for other context. The signal that's uh, the signal may be uh, originated uh, from from the totally different context, but it has been maintained for the long time because both males and females has experienced increase of fitness, and that's the only the possible. But deception can also evolve. Uh, but it could, uh, that's the only the small part of the, uh, uh, the the true communication taking advantage of exploiting the uh, the true communications. <coughs> um, okay, we uh, have a look at the uh, uh, some very important topics of the uh, animal communication. This is really um, exciting. Also, lots of research is being done by uh, uh, by this field. Also, I'm working on the uh, animal communication, especially the, uh, the acoustic communication in insects and frogs. And uh, these days, I'm work also working on, the, uh, on, on, on birds. Uh, that <coughs> and and you know, if you have more uh, interest in working on this, uh, 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 the animal communication, come to any time. Or if you, uh, maybe like uh, in the summer, if you have some time to maybe experience some uh, like a field research, then you, know, you, you are invited any time. Come to my lab, and you know we have some uh, do this like a little project or being involved in our own research in in, in our lab. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>